Thank you very much. We give God praise for another time, particularly for us to press on with uh, the kingdom lifestyle as we've been studying over the several months now. And I want to thank God for uh, all that God has led us through until this point. Uh, the last time we were uh, taking a discussion on blessed are the peacemakers. And today we are going to start looking at uh, verse 10 to 12 of Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. Now, before we go ahead, we'd like to bow our head again to pray together. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we give you honor. We give you praise. We give you adoration uh, for drawing us to yourself. The Bible says, blessed is that man whom the Lord causes to come near to him and brings to dwell in his presence, in his tabernacle. Our Father, we thank you that the greatest treasure we have is to belong to you and is to have you as our possession. And this day, as we begin again to look at the lifestyle of the kingdom of God, those that are children of God and the children of the kingdom, what is our lifestyle? As we go ahead now, looking at the matter of persecution, for the sake of righteousness, for the sake of who we are in Christ Jesus, for the sake of the fact that we are light and we are not darkness. Lord, I ask that you open our understanding and you grant us help as we study today. Particularly, Lord, as we have reflected on the blessedness that comes onto our lives because of what you did at Calvary on the cross. We ask, O God, that uh, the cross itself has become a reason for persecution in the world. Yet we ask, Father, that we will not deny you and will not walk away in order to compromise with the world system. Holy Spirit, we ask this moment that your word will come to us with simplicity. It will come to us with faith. It will mix with faith in our hearts. And it will do us good. Thank you for all those who are participating in the Bible study again today. Either as individuals in their different homes or as families. Or those who are sitting together as a group. Those that have adopted this as their group Bible study. We ask Father that whichever way we sit. And in whichever country or in whichever context your children are. Please reach out to us individually. Bless our heart and bless this time together with us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. And uh, I'd like to thank God for the uh, brothers and sisters that are on the platform with us and uh, those that are going to be helping me to read scriptures and read comments as we go on. Sister Jennifer, uh, from the, from, yes, Sister Jennifer, thank you. God bless you. And Sister Carla, Carla Duke, are you there? The Lord bless you. And Joshua, thank you for coordinating. We are trusting that God will help us as we go ahead. The Lord bless you. Now, we are going to go to chapter 10 of our book, uh, The Kingdom Lifestyle. I perceive that those of us that have been following, you will notice that we have concluded uh, chapter 9, Blessed are the Peacemakers, and we thank God for the practical discussion that we had last week to round up that particular uh, chapter. Thank God. And today we are going ahead to look at uh, chapter 10, Blessed are they which are persecuted. And we're going to be looking at this very deliberately. There are three verses in our text of study that uh, uh, we will take together. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, we're going to take verse 
10, 11, and 12 together. These are the uh, scriptures that the Lord Jesus Christ again began to speak about as part and continuation of the Sermon on the Mount, which he gave, where he outlined what will be the blessed attitude of those who are part of the kingdom. There are so much that we are going through in this, but we are trusting that God will assist us and guide us all through in Jesus' name. So before we go ahead, I will ask uh, Sister Jennifer to start us off by looking at Matthew 5, verse 10, 11, and 12. Matthew 5, 10, 11, and 12. Sister Jennifer, let's have you read that for us before we now begin the study itself. Yes, sir. Uh, Matthew 5, 10, 11 through 12, New King James Version. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Verse 12, rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Amen. That's good. Thank you very much, Sister Jennifer. Now, let's look at the introduction that we have in the book. In continuation of our series of studies on the kingdom lifestyle, taught in the Sermon on the Mount by our Lord Jesus Christ. We are now to look at what our, our attitude should be in the face of persecution. What does God want our attitude to look like uh, when we are faced with persecution? That's what we are going to be looking at today. God's word clearly declares Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Let me ask Sister Carla to quickly check that for us. In Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12, uh, there are a few things that you see in the word of God, and there's need to understand it as we go on. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12, Sister Carla. Yes. Um. Yes, verse 12. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer mm. persecution. Amen. Yes, all who desire, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. I want us to quickly mark that as we are going on. It looks clear to me as if uh, persecution is part and parcel of the kingdom life. For we to be hoping to raise Christians who are heavenly minded and who are working in a conformity with Christ's life and hope not to be persecuted in this world, it means we are only raising vegetable Christians it means we are only raising reeds that bend to every wind that can never take their stand. Persecution, we are seeing from the scripture that it is part and parcel of our call. He said, we have not been given only the opportunity uh, to believe in Christ Jesus, but also to suffer for him. Can we check that out very quickly again so that we can continue to build? I'm coming from that point because we need to set out uh, what must be the attitude of the believer when we are persecuted. Why must we be persecuted? These are the issues that we are going to study, but let me first underscore the fact that anybody who desires to live godly lives in Christ Jesus shall, it didn't say they may, 
the word of God was definite about it. They shall suffer persecution. And actually, if anybody claims to be a child of God, living according to the principles of Christ, and the world system has continued to applaud him and continue to clap for him, and they have admitted him in their system, we can safely say that that man's kind of faith is fake and is fraud. Because it does not, you cannot be a friend of the world that crucified your Lord. You cannot uh, have uh, uh, a, a, you know, an happy, happy, happy relationship with those who drew their dagger against your master. If that be the case, it only meant two things. You are either not for the master or you have sold him out. So let's quickly look at what Philippians chapter 1 says. Uh, Philippians chapter 1. And I'd like us to read verse 20 and verse 30. Would you like to read that for us, Brother Joshua? Philippians chapter 1, verse 29 and verse 30. Philippians chapter 1, verse 29 and 30 from the New King James. It says, uh, for to you, it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, mm. but also to suffer for his sake. Mm. Having the same conflict which you saw in me and now here is in me. That's good. Thank you. To us, it has been given in the behalf or on behalf of Christ, not only to believe, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. All the people that walk with God, they already knew that persecution is part and parcel of our calling. Uh, before I go ahead, because uh, I'm just using all of this to lay a general preamble for where we are going and what we are going to be studying in the course of this particular chapter. Let's speak one more thing before we go away. Now, uh, a discussion arose in Mark chapter 10. I want uh, Sister Jennifer to quickly check Mark chapter 10 for us. And... Um, you will read from verse 28, 29, and verse 30. Okay. Mark, That's, yes. Yes, Mark chapter 8. Uh, chapter, chapter 10. I'm sorry. That's right. Mark chapter 10, uh, verses 28 through 30, New King James Version. Yeah. Then Peter, then Peter began to say to him, see, we have left all and followed you. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels, who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. Thank you very much. So you see again that all who have left uh, houses, brethren, sisters, father, mother, wife, children, or lands for my sake and for the Gospels, Jesus said, he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time. Now, houses, and brethren, and sisters, and mothers, and lands, and children. But you will notice, he said, with persecutions. So you will see that part and parcel of the promise that God gave to us is that there will be persecution. So as we settle down in this uh, 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 study to look at the blessedness 
of those that are persecuted for righteousness. I'd like you to please note that our heritage in Christ Jesus includes this experience. All elders and patriarchs of our faith went through it. And if we are genuine believers, new Christian people, we cannot fear less. As we study, my desire is that you will please open your heart for divine illumination on this blessed attitude of the kingdom of God. Hearing, studying, and knowing this truth is not enough. You will be counted a fool until you rise up to obey it in a definite way. We've been going through this for quite a, some time now, and we are doing that not for edge knowledge, not just because we want to increase our knowledge of the Bible, but we are doing this because uh, God is looking for a species of men and women who are living the kingdom lifestyle, and who are his ambassadors and witnesses on the face of the earth, and whom he is preparing as God's end-time army to go and take their space at the gates. He said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And so as we'll be looking at a persecution as part of what we cannot uh, go away from, Part of what we cannot ignore in our work with the Lord. If we are going to be a genuine witness for Jesus and for his purpose on the face of the earth, we need to prepare ourselves. We need to think the way the Lord himself taught and trained his disciples. And that was what made it possible for them to actually penetrate their generation. They conquered their war not because they were majority, but because they were ready to die for their faith, no matter the opposition and no matter the persecution. And you can see the passage we read in Matthew 5. The Lord Jesus already just simply said, and I just want to read it again. We read it before, but we cannot stop reading that passage as we keep going on by the grace of God. He said, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice, rejoice and be exceeding glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets which were before you. So that shows that this is a normal thing for a child of God. And when it has not come to you, you need to check. Am I compromising? Is that why there's no persecution for my faith? Have I lowered the standard of biblical righteousness? Is that why everything seems to go smoothly for me? Have I just insulated myself in the midst of his, uh, of his enemies? Is that why they look as if they are my friends? The Lord will help us as we go ahead in Jesus name. So let's quickly move, uh, the first point, number one, what is persecution? What is persecution? And that's what we want to look at. What is persecution? Let's quickly check the word uh, persecution as we are looking at it. When he said, blessed are those who are persecuted uh, for righteousness sake. What is the meaning of persecution? Now, to be persecuted, according to Webster uh, Dictionary, he said, is to be harassed by troubles or punishments unjustly inflicted, particularly for religious opinions. That's how uh, 
uh, Webster uh, was talking about that. But from our notes, we're saying that persecution means to treat somebody in a cruel way, especially because of his race, political or religious beliefs. And in our own case from here, for the sake of righteousness. So let's quickly know that persecution means to treat someone, to harass someone by troubles or punishments unjustly inflicted. Dealing with someone in a cruel way, not because he has done something particularly wrong, but because of his stand particularly for righteousness sake. So, if you are treated cruelly because of your wrong behavior, it will not be defined as persecution. So, can we ask uh, Sister Carla to please check First Peter chapter 4 verse 15, First Peter 4 15, uh, so that we can get our bearing quickly from that scripture. 415, First Peter, Sister Carla. Yes, First Peter 4, verse 15 in the New King James Version. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Amen. Mm. Mm. That's very good. He said, but let none of you suffer as a murderer, as a thief, as an evildoer or a busybody in other men's matters. If that is what brought you problems, that is not persecution. If somebody suffers for the evil he did, for the wrong word he spoke, for being a busybody in other men's matters, for participating in robbery or as a thief or an evildoer or a murderer, such kind of uh, suffering is not to be called persecution at all. That person is only going through a just recompense of his own behavior. So let's note from the beginning that if anybody say, oh, I'm being persecuted because you have done something particularly wrong, or you are broken the, the principles that were laid that you say you are going to, uh, obey and you did not do that. Now, all of that will not treat it as persecution. So let's quickly note that we don't regard it as persecution when somebody suffers for his own misbehavior, for his own wrongdoing, or when somebody is caught by the natural laws for breaking the rules, we will not call that persecution. But persecution is what we are defining here for righteousness sake. You are hated because you are standing for the right. You are standing for the truth. Particularly, you are standing for the righteousness that comes uh, from Christ Jesus. Now, so can we quickly now look at what does it mean? By what means can a person be persecuted? We're going to look at various forms of persecution as we'll find it out in scripture. Let's quickly pick uh, scriptures to read uh, as we have outlined them. We start again with the color, Matthew 5, 11. Then Luke 6, 22, Sister Jennifer, uh, Brother Joshua, you will help us read Luke 10, 17 to 22, Luke 11, 33 to 37, we'll be returning to Sister Carla again, and John 16, 1 to 2, Sister Jennifer. Shall we pick those scriptures, we'll read it one after the other. And all of you that are following us, please uh, make a practice of turning to your scriptures so that we can be uh, following it together. Matthew 5, verse 11, Sister Carla. Yes, 
Matthew 5, verse 11, King James Version. Blessed right. are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Mm. Amen. Mm. That's good. So let's take note of the word falsely in that verse. Falsely. And for my sake. Verse 11. Go ahead. Luke 6.22. Luke Sister 6, Jennifer. Yes. Yes. Luke 6.22, New King James Version. Blessed are you when men hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and cast you out and cast out your name as evil for the son of man's sake. Amen. All right. So we're, we're going to be looking at each of these to help us see how, by what means can a man be persecuted? And we're seeing some few words that will come back to it again as we go ahead. Thank you for looking at Luke 6, 22. Luke 10, 17 to 22 for us. Brother Joshua. Yes, sir. Um, Luke 10, 17 to 22 from the New King James, it says, uh, then the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your name, your names are written in heaven. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills, reveal to reveal to to reveal him amen thank you very much go ahead and help us to check uh the hebrews 11 33 to 37 amen Sister, yeah jennifer yeah oh it's okay it's it's color go yeah. ahead okay thank you sir hebrews 11 verse 33 to 37 king james version who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Amen. Thank you very much. Maybe you should read verse 38. Can you add verse 38 to us? Yes. Of whom the world was not worthy, they mm. wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're talking about uh, by what means can a person be persecuted? And we're beginning to look at various aspects. Let's read 16, 1 and 2, Sister Jennifer. 
John 16, 1 through 2, New King James Version. These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God service. Mm. Whoever kills you will think he does God's service. He offers God's service. He will be doing it as if, yes, he's doing something for God. Uh, that's part of what persecution will be. So let's quickly look at all the passages that we have read and bring out what means, by what means can a person be persecuted as we are searching through scriptures. And we'll be getting it gradually as we go ahead. Uh, in Matthew 5, the first thing we saw in that verse 11, he said, blessed are you when men shall revile you. When they shall revile you. When they shall persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. So we are noting that one means by which someone could be persecuted, we are saying, you say, by saying all kinds of evil against you falsely because you believe in Christ Jesus. Because you are standing for the truth, they revile you. They speak evil of you. They persecute you and they bring all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Now, just because you are standing for the truth, you are standing for Jesus, you are standing for the right. You are standing on the path of righteousness. You will not allow evil to prevail in the office where you are working. You will not allow compromise. You will not allow people to cut corners. And this is not because you want to be unnecessarily hard or harsh, but because you want righteousness to be upheld and you want to stand for the testimony of Christ Jesus. Now, one of the means by which persecution comes is for you to be revived, for you to be slandered. They say all manner of evil against you falsely, falsely. And let's quickly look at what they did to Stephen in Acts chapter 6, verse 8 to 13. Joshua, would you like to help us check what they did to Stephen in Acts chapter 6? From verse 8 to 13. Acts chapter 6. Yes, sir. Uh, verse 8 to 13. New King James, it says, And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Mm. Then there arose some from what is called the synagogue of the freedmen, the uh, Cyrenians, Alex Alexandrians and those from Sicilia and Asia disputing with Stephen and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke then they secretly induced men to say we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God and they stirred up the people, the elders and the scribes, and and they came upon him, seized him, and brought him to the council. They also set up false witnesses who said, This man does not cease to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. Amen. Thank you very much. You can read on and see the kind of persecution that they brought against our brother Stephen, simply because he was preaching and teaching Jesus, and he was standing for the truth. We are told that they began to resist him. They began to oppose him. If he says something like this, they will argue it. But because they could not resist the wisdom 
and the spirit by which he spoke. You saw what they now decided to do. We are told that then they secretly induced men, they suborned men to say, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. All of that was false. But because they want to pull him down, they want to resist him, the way he is ministering the word of God, the way he is confronting wickedness, the way he is drawing souls to the kingdom of God, was already uh, a, a trouble in their heart. And they must do the work of their own master, the devil. So they stood up to persecute him. So let's quickly note that persecution could come by false accusation. It could come by slanderous words. It could come by people reviling you, looking down and speaking you down. It could even come by creating false witnesses against you. They just gather together to make sure that let's pull him down. Let's silence him here. We don't want to hear his Jesus. We want to know what he's talking about. And this has been the character of the world system against those who believed. And Jesus told us that it will happen. And so I want you to know that the growth of the church in the New Testament has never been without persecution. Actually, church grew better and faster in the context of persecution. And I would like to say, without any fear of contradiction, whenever the church became very, very uh, tolerant with the world, whenever the church became so friendly with the world system, whenever the church, the people of God, find an easy going with the system of this world, you must know very quickly that that is the period of backsliding. We may think it's a good time of prosperity. We may think it's a good time of pleasure when nothing troubles us. That is when the church goes to sleep most of the time. The trouble that we have faced, those of you that have grown in America or in the UK or any part of Europe, you will notice that When the church started, when the move of God started in all those countries, they started because of persecution. The founding fathers that came to the U.S., that founded the new land, it was persecution that drove them from where they came. And because they were not going to give up their faith, that's why as wanderers, but wherever they wander to, they preach the gospel. That was what brought the word of God to where you are now that formed that new land. Now, it was persecution in England that brought about the great move of God under John Wesley. There has never been a a reviver that did not come as a result of persecution. If there's a genuine reviver breaking forth in our lives, we must begin to prepare for persecution. Must begin to prepare our minds and get ready for that which the world system had always done against our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so I'd like to say again, as we are beginning to plead with God and pray for revival. If we think we are going to get genuine revival, genuine move of God in our nations, and it will be without persecution and conflicts, then we are not thinking well. Then we are not serious. Persecution will come. The move of God for which we are praying, as it breaks forth, I want you to know that we are again going to face the same uh, opposition from the kingdom of darkness. It is because as we are advancing with the truth, the enemy becomes jittery. Then we say, oh, look at these ones. They have come to turn the world upside down. They have come to dislodge my kingdom. And so he will not fold his hand. He will do all he could to see whether he can stop us. He couldn't stop them in their day. And I trust God that he will not be able to stop us in our own time 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, let's look at the next means by which we can be persecuted. He said by hating us. You can be persecuted by men hating you needlessly without any reason. Now, we go back to our scripture as we read and we will ask Sister Jennifer to peace read John 15, 18 and then our Sister Carla will read uh, Psalm 38. John 15, verse 18, New King James Version. If the world yeah. hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Amen. Mm. If the world hates you, you must know that it hated me before you. Verse 38, I mean Psalm 38 and verse 19 and 20. Psalm 38, 19 and 20, King James Version. Yes. But mine enemies are lively and they are strong. And they that hate me wrongfully are multiplied. They also that render evil for good are mine adversaries because I follow the thing that good is. Amen. You see, that is it. He said, my enemies, they are lively as if they are active. They are not dormant. They are not dormant. They are strong. They are well coordinated. And they that hate me wrongfully, they are multiplied. They also that render evil for good, they are my adversaries. Because I follow the thing that good is. after righteousness standing in the narrow way according to Jesus he said because the world will hate you because it is me they hated first before you because of Jesus for whom we are standing that's why the world system will hate you and that is always the basis of every persecution Every persecution is always seeking that you should stop loving Jesus. You should stop preaching Jesus. You should stop walking with him. And if you agree, if you agree to lower your standard, if you agree to stop, you know, they say you are, you are, you are too fanatical about this, your Jesus. If you decide to say, okay, let me become moderate, then persecution will stop. When you choose to compromise, then nobody will worry you again. You can imagine that when uh, some of us were younger and we were living reckless lives, nobody was annoyed with you. But the moment you change and you began to study the Bible and you were not going for white night parties anymore and you are now living in righteousness and you are now putting away all those uh, wrong relationship that we used to run up and down with, then persecution started. Even your parents, who you thought should have been happy that, oh, this boy is beginning to settle down. They begin to wonder, say, your own is too much. It is not you they hated. Jesus said, it is me. It is me they hated. Say, the world will hate you because it is me they hated. And they hated me before they hated you. So you should know that. That when you see people uh, yelling at you, hating you for no reason, criticizing you for no cause, simply because you are standing for the truth, Jesus said you should not be discouraged. You should not be offended. They will put you out of the synagogues. And even when they are doing it. They will be thinking they are doing service unto the Lord. That's what we have been looking at. And can I ask that we go a little further that 
Persecution sometimes comes by excluding you to keep you out of their company or even out of their congregation. You know, we read, we read earlier in Luke 6.22, if I can repeat Luke 6.22 uh, from uh, the New King James Version that our sister read, Luke 6.22, let me try to bring it back and see the fact that part of persecution could be that they exclude you. Say, blessed are you when men hate you. And when they exclude you, I will not have enough time tonight to be explaining or today to explain all those forms of persecution. Where because you have decided to stand for the truth, whenever they are having their caucus meeting, they don't call you again. They try to isolate you as if to intimidate you. Imagine that you are in the class of, of, of a, a number of students. When you are not converted, when you are living recklessly like they do, you are great friends. But the moment you turn to Christ, you find that all of them, as if they have made a, cons- a, a conspiracy to pull away from you. When you are coming, they stop talking. When you leave, they start laughing. They keep making you feel unwanted and unwelcome. Not because of anything. It's not because you are, you are less beautiful. It's not because anything is wrong with your life or your outlook. It's simply because they hated the man you now carry. They hated the Christ that is in you. Now, if you will be faithful as a child of God, living the kind of life that Jesus had brought us to live. What they did to our master, they must do to you. He said, if they have loved me, they will have loved you. If they have accepted me, they will have accepted you. But because they hated me, they will hate you as well. Now he said, blessed are you when men hate you. And when they exclude you and revile you and cast out your name as evil, for the son of man's sake. I want to see whether uh, someone could check that for us from any other version. Is there any version that you have that you can help us read? Is there a message? Yes, Does sir. anybody have message version there? Yes. Yes, sir. I have the message. All right. Luke six twenty two. King uh, message. Excuse me. Count yeah. yourself blessed every time someone cuts you down or throws mm-hmm. you out. Mm-hmm. Every time someone smears or blackens your name to discredit me. Mm. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort and that per- that that person mm. is uncomfortable. That is it. Okay. Mm-hmm. That is it. Count yourself blessed. Every time someone cuts you down or throws you out, every time someone smears or blackens your name just to discredit me, what it means is that the truth is too close for comfort for that person. And that that person is becoming uncomfortable because of your light that is shining. Because of the life you are bearing. Sometimes you see them shouting and they say, then you are doing holier than thou, holier than thou. You have not done anything wrong. It's simply because the light is shining and darkness cannot comprehend it. Your life is a challenge and you know the truth has become too close for comfort because they can't ignore you. They can't ignore what your life is now. It continues to bring judgment upon their own darkness. Now, when that happens, don't ever think anything is wrong with you. Don't you ever think of lowering the life or lowering your light or trying to compromise in order to enter their good books. Actually, their book is not good for you anymore. And you can't be in the good books of the enemy of your savior. 
I think let them blacken you out, as that scripture is saying. When they blacken your name out to discredit me, when they say, don't mind Jennifer, don't mind her. She's too, that is too much on her head. No problem. That's the time you should rejoice. That's the time you should stand up and, and, and be glad because now something is beginning to get at the enemy. Light is beginning to pierce the enemy's camp and they are too uncomfortable for it. Now, Jesus said, when that happens, you should be glad. You should rejoice. When they exclude you to keep you out of their company or even out of their congregation. Now, you see that it has happened to our Lord Jesus before. Let's go to Luke 4, 28 to 29. Luke Chapter 4, verse 28 and 29. Brother Joshua, can you pick that for us? And Kala, John 9, 6, verse 7, verse 15, and verse 19 to 22. So we just wanted to read John chapter 9 for us. Uh, Luke uh, 4, verse 28 and 29. Yes, sir. Uh, it says, So all those in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath mm. and rose up and thrust him out of the city. And they led him to the brow of the hill on which their city was built, that they might throw him down over the cliff. Now, you imagine this is what you are going to do to Jesus. And for what? For what? Simply because the word of God. He read scripture and he said, today this scripture must be fulfilled in your ears and in your eyes. And they rose up against him. And they were so annoyed for what they heard him saying. So sometimes preaching the truth could draw persecution. And how many times preachers who decided to preach the truth have been blacklisted, blackmailed, and even persecuted and sometimes jailed. Whereas compromising preachers, they seem to be enjoying the applaud of everybody. Because they are not standing for any truth. They are only speaking what men want to hear. They are just, you know, the Bible says men have itching ears and they will gather to themselves. False teachers who tell them what they want to hear. If we keep preaching what people want to hear and we keep pampering the flesh, we are not likely to be persecuted. But if we stand for the truth and we preach the undiluted word of God, and we confront sinners and cause sin, sin. We call a spade a spade instead of looking for new names uh, in order to consume uh, misbehavior. If we stand to confront sin the way the word of God did, definitely we are going to be persecuted. That was what happened to Stephen. That was what happened to our Lord Jesus here. That was what happened to Daniel as we are going to be looking at the examples later on as the Lord will be leading us. Now, John 9, 6, 7, 15, 19 to 22. John 9, Sister Carla. Amen. John 9, starting verse 6, King James Version. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, mm. which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seen. Verse 15. Oh. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, he put the clay upon my eyes and I washed and do see. Verse number 19. 
And then they asked them, saying, Is this your son who ye say was born blind? How then doth he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age. Ask him. He shall speak for himself. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. Amen. Please read on a bit. Sure. Verse 23. Therefore said his parents, he is of age. Ask him. Then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know that whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him again, what did he to thee? What did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? He answered them, I have told you already. And ye did not hear. Wherefore, would ye hear it again? Will ye also be his disciples? Then they <laughs> reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. The mm. man answered and said unto them, Why herein is a marvelous thing that mm. ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened my eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. They answered and said unto him, thou wast altogether born in sins and thou thou teach us and they cast him out. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Did you see this story? And what was the reason for this persecution? Now here was a blind man that was born blind and he had received a miracle and his eyes had been opened when he encountered Jesus. Instead of for them to celebrate him, Instead for them to thank God with him, instead of for them to go and congratulate his prayer and say, Kai, this problem is finally resolved. We thank God. But because they hated Jesus, they would not have Jesus in their midst. For that reason, they did all they could to make the young man whose eyes was born blind to Deny Christ. And simply because you will not deny Christ, you see all the arguments, all the reviling until they cast him out. Sometimes when you refuse to hide your testimony of Christ, when you refuse to reduce the testimony of Christ in your life, persecution can come. When you are bold to tell it as it is, Sometimes they will say, no, 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 no. Stop talking that kind of thing. We don't need that here. And anytime you stand up and you want to testify what Christ is or what he has done in your life, they shout you down. And they say, get out of this place. They may even cast you out of their congregation. Some of us, we suffer persecution when we first repented because we are in congregations where it was like a crime to be born again. It was like a crime to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So when we became born again, we were cast out of the, of the, of the congregations and said, no, 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 we don't want that kind of thing here. When we are drinking, when we are sleeping about with girls, they were not disturbed. But when our life changed and we began to walk with Jesus and began to preach and teach the truth, 
then we became the offenders. It was not you they hated. It was me they hated. If they have loved Jesus, they will have loved you. So let's know that persecution, because of righteousness sake, or because of Jesus sake, has been on over and over the years. And all those who will live godly life in Christ Jesus, according to scriptures, they will suffer persecution. By insulting us, or by reviling our lives, we read that when we are looking at Luke 6. Said they revile you. They insult you. They bring all manner of names against you. Sometimes they even call you, they, they even abuse you. Not because of any, but because of Christ Jesus, because of your faith. Uh, the old men of old who serve God, they didn't, they didn't sue for libel. They knew that it's because of their faith in Christ Jesus that this has come to them. Now, let's go on to now look at 2 Samuel 16. We read verse 5 to 12. Now we are going to ask Brother Joshua to pick that for us. And then Sister Jennifer will read 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 23. Yes. 2 Samuel uh, chapter 16, verse 5 to 12. Uh, It says, Now when King David came to Bahurim, there was a man from the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimi, the son of Gira. Coming from there, he came out cursing continuously as he came. And he threw stones at David and at all the servants of King David. And all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. So Shimi uh, said thus when he cursed, Come out, come out, you bloodthirsty man, you rogue. The Lord has brought upon you all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose place you have reigned. And the Lord has delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom, your son. So now you are caught in your own evil because you are a bloodthirsty man. Mm. Then Abishai, the son of Zeruai said to the king, why should this dead dog curse my lord, the king? Please let me go over and take off his head. But the king said, what have I to do with you, you sons of Zeruai? So let him curse because the Lord has said to him, curse David. Who then shall say, why have you done so? And David said to Abishai and all the servants, See how my son who came from my own body seeks my life. How much more now may this Benjamite let him alone and let him curse. For so the Lord has ordered him. It may be that the Lord will look on my affliction and that the Lord will repay me with good for his cursing this day. Amen. Thank you very much. That's a long story to read. We are looking at what it means to be persecuted by reviling, by insulting, a a provoking, a kind of provocation that comes to our lives just to make you lose your temper so that the faith and the word of God you are preaching may become discredited. You can imagine what this young man was doing. He was actually accusing David for what he did not do. David had no hand in the death of Saul in any way. He did not think of 
all the troubles that Saul brought on David, chasing him from one a bush to another bush, from one mountain to another cave. He did not think about that. He did not think about all the good things that David did in delivering the children of Israel from Goliath and from the Philistines. He just came out and he was causing rainy abuses upon David. But you see, we are going to see what to do when that kind of thing comes to us. Let's look at 1 Peter 2.23, which our sister Jennifer is about to read for us. 2.23. 1 Peter 2 and 23, New King James Version. Who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return. Mm. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but mm. committed himself to him who judges righteously. Amen. Amen. So just as you saw what David did here, he someone said, who is this dead dog? Let's go and cut off his head. But David said, no, no, you don't do that. Allow him to do what he's doing. We don't revenge. We don't retaliate. We don't revive back. Particularly when you are being revived for the sake of the gospel. For the sake of righteousness. For the truth for which you stood. Even if people stand and they say all manner of evil against you. uh, The way Jesus handled it is he did not revive back again. We know that it is happening not because you did anything wrong, but because of the life of Christ that you are carrying. Now, can we go quickly and look at what other means? We said by taking us to court, scourging in the synagogue, and all that could happen. Let's now go to Acts chapter 5. As Sister Carla, you will read all the verses there, 27, 28. 40 and 41. Amen. Acts 5, starting with verse 27, uh, King James Version. Yes. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And Mm -hmm. behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine." and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Mm. Verse number 40. And to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, Mm. they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Mm. Amen. Read verse 42. Okay. And daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Now you see, that is it. The only offense they had was that they are preaching Jesus. They are declaring that Jesus Christ is Lord. In those days, uh, under the communist government, the offense that believers had was that they were preaching Christ. So many of them were chased. Some were sawn asunder. There are people that they cut their tongue so that they would not be able to speak. Some, they, they cut their, their, their fingers off so that they will not be able to write anything about the word of God. Men that have suffered for the gospel and did not deny it, they have been the heroes that have allowed our faith to remain until now. If we in our own generation, we will continue to compromise, the next generation will not have no faith to hold. There will be no legacy to leave for the children. And so Jesus, right from the beginning, was teaching his disciples and said, Blessed are you when you are persecuted for righteousness sake. So you will see that the disciples, rather than go intimidated, weeping, and feeling sorry for themselves, the Bible said, they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing. Rejoicing that 
they have been counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. That was how they recognized that, yes, what Jesus said to us in Matthew 5, in Luke 6, we now have opportunity of experiencing it. How I look forward to a time when it will be your own turn, your own, your own opportunity to be counted worthy to suffer for our dear Lord. Eh? To be persecuted because of your faith. To be persecuted because you are standing for righteousness. It's always a privilege. It's a great privilege that I pray that God will allow you to have. When it happens, something else comes on your life. The Bible calls it the spirit of glory. When we study further, you will see what it means. Every time you are persecuted for righteousness sake, there's a promotion for you. There's a lifting up in your spirit. There's a a liberating force or power that comes upon you. But every time you have opportunity to stand up for Christ and you compromise or you dodge the situation, there's a reduction in your faith. There's something that you have lost. You have lost a golden opportunity that will have brought the spirit of glory upon your life. These brothers went everywhere rejoicing, even though they have been scorched, they have been beaten, they have been cast out of their synagogues, yet they did not cease, the Bible said, and daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Do you know that their persecution will have stopped? If they stop preaching Christ, they say, well, it has been legislated that we should not preach again. And that's why you have kept quiet. That's why you did not speak the word of God. That's why you are in school where you are a teacher and you cannot teach or speak the word of God to the children. And they are becoming wild in your very eyes. Is it because you don't want to lose your job? Is it because you don't want to be persecuted? Is it because you want to have uh, a good uh, showing in the eyes of men? Is that why the gospel has become weak in your hand? All the time that the gospel prevailed, it prevailed against persecution. It prevailed against opposition. And because they refused to give up or give in, they were persecuted. But wherever persecution has taken place for the sake of the gospel or for the sake of righteousness, the kingdom of God expanded. Even if they killed you, they killed Brother Stephen. But you know, after Stephen's death, the way the gospel spread like wildfire, nobody could stop it. Because wherever they were scattered to, they preached. Women were preaching Men were preaching everywhere they went. They were speaking Jesus everywhere. And so the gospel spread. Persecution was meant to stop it, but they did not know that it furthered it. It was in that persecution that John, I mean, uh, 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 Paul was going on the road to Damascus. He had got authority to go and kill, to go and uh, put in prison anybody who is preaching this way when he was also arrested. Persecution has always been the atmosphere, the habitat where the word of God grows faster. And if by the grace of God, we want to see another move of God in our time, what do we need to do? We need to get ready. I'm not saying go and look for trouble, but I'm saying get ready to stand for the truth. And as you stand for the truth, we will see God manifesting his power in your life. Now, can we go a little further? Now, sometimes persecution is brought to us by being brought before governors and kings because of our faith in Christ Jesus. And the Lord Jesus said, he said, they will bring you before kings, they will bring you before... So actually, the passage that a a brother... Joshua read in Luke chapter 10, I was looking at it that it was not supposed to be Luke 10. 
is Matthew chapter 10. So Joshua, please go back and help us read Matthew 10, not Luke 10. I suppose it's supposed to be Matthew chapter 10. Please check it. And if he confirms it, I want all of you to please correct it in your in your note, if you have your note. Matthew chapter 10, verse 17 to 22 is what that passage should be pointing at, not Luke. Yes? Yes, sir. Joshua, can you confirm that? Yes, sir. Um, Matthew 10, uh, 17 to 22. Right. Says, um, but beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak. For it will be given to you in that hour when you should speak, what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you. Now, now brother will deliver up brother to death and fa- a father his child and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death and mm. you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but mm. he who endures to the end will be saved. Amen. Can you read verse 23 just to add 23 to it? Yes, sir. When they persecute you in this city, flee to another. For assuredly, I say to you, you will not have gone through these cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Amen. Keep, keep on reading. Just keep on reading. That scripture is very interesting. Okay, sir. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of of his household? Therefore, do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. Mm. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but Mm. rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Thank you very much. Thank you. We can stop there, Brother Joshua. Now, that's the passage. Please replace Luke 10 uh, with Matthew chapter 10. And uh, you can read as long as you want. If you want to read up to verse 28, fine. But... What we are saying is that persecution is inherent in the preaching and in the spreading of the gospel. And Jesus did not mean words as he was teaching his disciples. So when the disciples were brought before governors, when they were persecuted and they were accused, they were only fulfilling what the Lord Jesus has said concerning them. And they took it joyfully because it's a privilege. Now, if we also want to live in the kingdom and want to establish the kingdom of God in our time, we cannot uh, run away from persecution. It's going to come to you. And I want to say to you, my dear brother, at every level, Even when you are a a student in the primary school or a student in the secondary school or a student in the tertiary institution, when you stand for Christ, your colleagues will persecute you. Your friend will persecute you. Sometimes they persecute you by 
excommunicating you from their friends, friendship. They say, no, 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 we can't move with him again. He's too, his, his own is too much. Sometimes they may gang together just to ridicule you as if there's something particularly wrong about you. You could be persecuted even in your own style simply because of your faith. You could be persecuted in the class. Sometimes, even a lecturer can persecute you by intimidating you because you are not going to compromise. You have refused to give in to his advances. You have decided that, look, I am a child of God. I will not sell my body. I will not sell my life out. Now, when a man takes a stand for God, Jesus Christ said, yes, happy are you. Happy are you. Now, before we end our study today, because that's where we are going to uh, end, if I'm able, I'll just get you to the first section of number two. But if we can't, we can stop where we are now, and then we pray together. Now, let's read what happened to uh, the Hebrew children in Dan, Daniel chapter 3, verse 14 to 21. Let's ask her sister Jennifer to pick that for us. Daniel chapter 3, verse 14 to 21. And then sister Carla, you will read 23, Act 23, 33 to 35 for us. Yes, Daniel chapter 3, verses 14 through 21, New King James Version. All right. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, and and symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made, good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Hmm. Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, Let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor Mm. will we worship the gold image that you have set up. Verse 19. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the fiery, of the burning, fiery furnace. Please read on. These are stories we can't stop. Verse 22. Therefore... Because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Verse 24. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, did we not cast three men into the bound, in, bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Verse 25, Look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they mm. are not hurt. And mm. the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Mm. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, Come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. 
verse 27. And the satraps, administrators, governors, and the king's counselors gathered together, and they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. Hallelujah. Of their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected, and the smell Mm. of the fire was not on them. Mm. Verse 28. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel. He delivered his servants who trusted in him, and they have frustrated the king's word mm-hmm. and yielded their bodies that mm. they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, mm. I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made an ash heap because there is no other God who can deliver like this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's it. You see, we will not see the great move of God that will subdue kings, that will bring the arrogance of men on their knees unless we are willing to go through persecution. When the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, when they stood up to the king and said, we don't need to answer you in this matter. If our God does not deliver us from your hand and from your fire, no problem. We better die. We prefer to burn than to bend. We prefer to be roasted alive than to be compromisers walking on the street. Those are the things that God used and advanced his kingdom in their own time. If we are going to be children of the kingdom, and in this present age, when the name of Jesus has become an offense everywhere, where anytime you want to stand for Christ, everybody is standing and saying, don't bring that here, don't bring that here. If we will not take a stand and be prepared even to be persecuted for our faith, then we will not be able to drive this matter to the gates of the enemy. As I draw this uh, Bible study to a conclusion for today, I want you to know that everywhere there is advancement of the kingdom of God, it came at the expense of those people that tool for the truth, even in the midst of persecution. And as we read earlier in the book of Hebrews 11, we were told that some were son asunder. Can you imagine that they brought a panasaur, what you use to cut wood, and they are using it to cut men in pieces. If they would deny their faith in Christ, they did not. Some had cruel mockings. When we talk of cruel mockings, it was not just that they were just using words to mock them alone. They were also, you know, misusing them. They were mocking their lives. And yet they did not give in. They did not succumb. That was what pushed the gospel forward. That was what made the word of God unconquerable. The man that translated the Bible into English, he was, he was, he was condemned unto death by, by hanging. And they went and tied him to stake and roasted him alive for doing nothing but that he translated the word of God into English language. Look at how many millions and millions of souls have been blessed because of the English Bible today. But William Tindy had to pay that price. They were persecuted for their faith, and that's why we have that faith today. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake and for my sake. Brothers and sisters, as we draw this particular study to a close for today, this is still a general introduction on the blessedness of being persecuted, but I want you to know that persecution is part and parcel of our faith. Is a lifestyle of the kingdom. As soon as you become a child of God, must be ready for persecution. It may be mild, 
It may be mild. It may be that even when you are just in class, you are raising up your hand to say something, they refuse to allow you because they know that you are going to speak about Christ. Sometimes it may just be that even you are just playing with your colleagues, but because they know that you are a child of God, they push you behind and say, don't let her bring that foolishness here. As if you are a second class or second rated citizen, it is not you they hated. It is me who lives in you they hated. That's what Christ said. He said, uh, a disciple can never be higher or better than his uh, master. If they call your master baseball, why will you be surprised when they begin to persecute you and use all kinds of evil words, evil language against you? As we draw this to a conclusion, let's look at uh, Acts 23, which we want uh, Carla to read for us. 23, 33 to 35. Amen. Acts 23, verse 33 to 35, King yes. James Version. Mm. Who, when they came to Caesarea and delivered the epistle to the governor, presented Paul also before him. And when the governor had read the letter, he asked of what province he was. And when he understood that he was a Cilicia, I will hear thee, said he, when thine accusers are also come. And he commanded him to be kept in Herod's judgment hall. Amen. You see, here was Paul being taken from one judgment hall to another for doing nothing wrong except that he preached Christ and him crucified. But that was the context in which the gospel broke forth. That was the context in which the gospel got to Europe. That was the context in which the gospel got to Rome. That was the context in which several people came to the knowledge of the truth. Now, persecution has always been a vehicle of spreading the truth. And if we raise believers nowadays that will rather compromise, that will rather bow than to take a stand for God. What has happened is that the gospel becomes weak. It becomes negotiated. It becomes, you know, robbed of its power. So you see that constantly we are, we are confronted with changing, changing our message, changing our stand. To the point that now people are bold to begin to dictate to us what should be our doctrine, what should be our stand. Now you now see that if you stand up and preach against the sin of the land, of the people, you preach against a, a same-sex marriage or you speak against any of those atrocities in our time, you are treated. And because we are afraid of being persecuted, Many people have kept quiet. Is that you don't say that so that they will not pick you up. This was the same issue. They said, We told you not to preach in that name again. That was the reason why they were scorched, they were beaten, they were dragged in the floor. They were persecuted, they were put in prison, they were put in jail, and they were kept, even sometimes they were kept in jail without any hearing. Because they know that if they give them chance, even just to defend themselves, they will hear the gospel. And I put it to you. As we conclude for today, it's a privilege, as we read in Philippians chapter 1, it's a privilege to not only believe in Christ, but to also suffer persecution for him. Jesus said, yes, Anyone who has left father or mother or anything, he will get wonderful of it in this present time, but along with persecutions. And then in the world to come, eternal life. Now, let us conclude by noting that persecution could even come to the point of being handed over to death. Several brothers and sisters have been killed simply because they refuse to let go of their faith. But whereas we may think it's a loss, but I want you to know that every blood that was shed because somebody was standing for the gospel, 
is a seed. It never goes without being rewarded. Lives will be brought to the kingdom because one soul, again, had been persecuted and cut short because of the faith. I remember that when when uh, uh, William Tinde was being roasted alive, the last word they heard him say, he said, Lord, please open the eyes of the king of England. Open the eyes of the king of England. Come and see the way the Lord answered that prayer. So what we call King James Bible today was the answer to that prayer. When the king of England was arrested and he ordered that the Bible should be printed and distributed widely all through the land. That's why you call it King James Bible. This was the prayer of uh, Brother William Tindy at the point of his death. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, wherever you are, I will not know the situation in your in your family. Are you the only person who is born again in that family and so you are facing persecution? Sometime because of persecution, some of us, our school fees were denied because they are saying it's because uh, you are having all your needs met. That's why you are carrying this uh, uh, fanaticism about Jesus Christ. And they stopped it. But it didn't stop us. It didn't stop us from advancing with the word of God. We have become what we have become today, despite all those persecutions in the early time. Are you a student in your house? Because you have taken a step to obey the word of God. Because you have decided to restitute from living a lie. You have known that, yes, that certificate you used, it was not yours. And you decided to throw it aside and face the reality for that reason. Your uncle, your auntie, your brothers, they have stood against you. Jesus said, happy are you if you are persecuted for righteousness sake. Happy are you. This evening, as we pray together, or as maybe in your own area, maybe it's in the morning or in the afternoon, but I want us to call on God together and say, Lord, if it's a privilege to be counted worthy to suffer for you, to suffer persecution because of righteousness, please give me my own opportunity. If at any time you have compromised or you have dodged or you have lowered the standard because you didn't want to be persecuted, can you ask God to please give you opportunity because whensoever you do, you find an advancement. Even the spirit of glory will rest upon you. When we come back by the grace of God, and we are taking from uh, uh, number two forward, then you will see us talking about how necessary, how compulsory is it for every disciple of Christ uh, to, to pass through or to have persecution. We will deal with that as a beginning point of our Bible study next week by the grace of God. But I want you to pray with me now. It's an opportunity. Jesus said, blessed are you when it happens. And if you have been genuinely converted, you will see it. Even if you are just a child who got repented in the children's club, you will see persecution from fellow children. You will see it. Whether you are a lady, you will see it. Wherever you are. But it's your opportunity. It's a privilege to be counted worthy, not only to believe in Christ Jesus, but to suffer persecution for his name. Shall we pray together? Will you look at your life today? And if you have repented, what have you repented from? Has the world system reacted because you no longer belong to it? Or because of fear, you have quickly compromised. Are you backsliding because persecution arose and the word of God did not take deep root in your heart, so you withered out? 
I want to call you now. That persecution was not meant to kill you. It was to refine you. Look at the story we read of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. To the extent that they were cast into the furnace. Heated seven times than usual. But see what God did. It is in the midst of that fire that the Son of God came to fellowship with them. And the result of that persecution was that the whole nation was declared, you know, for God. Would you like to pray with me? And say, Lord, my own opportunity to stand for you, don't let it get lost. Fear to be counter for Christ, please take it away from my life. Perhaps you are listening to this message and you are in a country where it looks like, like forbidding to preach Christ or to be known to be converted. Have you come from a, a family that they, they thought it was wrong for you to turn your life to Christ? Several have been persecuted in different ways, either from the their family life, from their religion and all of that. But they have not, they have not stopped standing. I encourage you this evening that as we pray together, please we go and say, Lord, give me opportunity also, not only to believe you, but to suffer for your name's sake. And if there are places where you have caught corners because you didn't want to be persecuted, you didn't want the attack and the the opposition and you have become you know compatible with the world system to the extent now that you are beginning to compromise and backslide can you call on God and say Lord please have mercy on me and give me another chance give me another opportunity at this point let's pray together let's pray together Father thank you for this opportunity And thank you for the word of God. Thank you for beginning to introduce us to another kingdom lifestyle. It's a kingdom lifestyle. All those who will live godly lives in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Lord, I pray that this which is the heritage of all of us, may we not in any way short measure the truth because we are afraid of standing for you. All those who are hearing us, some are already in the heat of persecution. Please send a word to them. Encourage them today to keep standing. Some, oh God, because of fear, they have gone to compromise. They have come to, to, to lower the truth, to lower the standard, and to compromise their stand. Please call them back. Please do a new thing in their hearts this day. And for those, oh God, who would have given their heart to Christ, but because they are feeling the ah, the threat of my parents, the threat of my friends, I will be lonely. Lord, I ask that they will encounter you and know that the way to, to glory is this way. The way to becoming a champion, a conqueror is this way. And that persecution is nothing but an opportunity to identify with the risen Lord. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen.